Hello my dear friends, you're in the Military Summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night. And of course the most probably important updates are coming from the Black Sea and uh, this morning the United States launched another reconnaissance mission uh, above the, the territory of the Black Sea, another uh, global hawk, um, RQ-4B currently in this area so we can expect more strikes more attempts to attack from the ukrainian side of the russian ships or probably the infrastructure or ammo depots in crimea or something else but this is not only the only interesting update another interesting updates are coming from the south of odessa region and this night the russians made massive missile and drone strike against another port in that area the russians were attacking ismail uh, during the night, somewhere at 2, uh, at 1, 2, 3 a.m. of the local time, we start receiving some videos, some photos, some updates about those strikes and so on. As a result of uh, those attacks, the Russians managed to damage and destroy at least fuel depot and probably something else, not just the fuel depot. And this is a very interesting attack. And probably this is a very interesting event that we need to discuss in more details. I'll explain to you why. Why? If you remember a few days ago, the Russians were bombing the uh, another port uh, on this region River on Dunai River Penny, and today they were attacking Ismail. So, what is the purpose of these attacks? Because, as we know, the uh, there is a blockade of the Black Sea, there is a blockade of Ukrainian ports, but for some reason the Russians continue attacking this area. The thing is that uh, a few days ago, on the 31st of July, uh, the uh, West, the some ship, free ship under uh, some flag, I don't know, probably of D Denmark fl or Netherlands flag or something like this, I don't remember, uh, under Israeli flag, as I remember, uh, according to the updates, we have penetrated the Russians' blockade and entered the Dunai, this river and was heading in direction of this port, Ismail port. So the Russians reported that every single ship that goes in direction of Ukrainian port will be considered as a, as a ship that uh, has ammo on board. And of course, if you remember a few weeks we discussed, a few weeks ago we discussed that of course the Western countries will try to test, the Russians will try to understand the red line and will try to, try to of course to cross the red line and to understand the Russian possibilities. And for these purposes we discussed that sooner or later the Western countries will send, let's say, civilian ship a natural ship in this area to understand what the Russians can do and what are they going to do. And they did this. On the 31st of July, so a few days ago, the Western countries sent uh, like, uh, uh, the ship under the neutral flag of, Isra of Israel and that ship entered Ismail because there is, it's, it's not like a secret information, it's, it's written on the board, on the documents of the ship. And uh, as we can see, the Russians didn't uh, attack that ship while the ship was uh, in the Black Sea because of course it's very risky. And uh, what is the reason of this attack? Uh, the, Rus you, uh, the Russians reported that they will, would consider every ship with weapon, but you can't attack any ship because just of, you of your consideration, of your considering. So, but the Russians uh, uh, found a plan, found, found a solution to this idea. Uh, so basically, as you can see, the Russians are not going to attack ships on the, in the Black Sea. While the ships are in the Black Sea or in the river or on the remove, they're not going to attack any of the ships. But the Russians will attack ports. So that means, and this is a very important part, this is very important because uh, this is a very useful information either for the Russians, for the Western countries and for the Ukrainians and so on. Currently the Western countries know and realize, NATO countries for sure, that the Russians are not going to attack ships while they're moving in the Black Sea or between the rivers. The only way, because when the Russians attack the port, they could say that we are not attacking the ships, we were attacking the ports, and it's not our problem that while attacking the port, your ship was in the port. You know, you got the idea, right? So basically and legally, uh, literally, the Russians were attacking not the ships, they were attacking the ports, but the ships were in the port at that moment, and of course they were damaged or even destroyed. So this is the tactic that the Russians are going to use. And this is a very useful piece of information for the NATO countries, and now they need to understand what they can do with this information, that the Russians are going to attack just the port. So basically, if the Western countries can find a solution how to send um, ammo, weapon in these ports and 
to let's say to unpack the ships on the move or something like this they will be able to continue uh, sending weapons sending everything they can using this uh, this uh, road this grain deal road or something like this and this is also a very important situation for the russians the russians have discovered their possibilities the russians have discovered their red line and everything connected with the situation and now they understand that the russians yes the russians will attack the ports but there is like a rule and now these, it's important to find the solution, at least for the Western countries and for the Russians as well. Furthermore, as we can see, the Russians haven't sent the ships from their fleet to in this area, let's say, to block this area, to make some kind of investigations, to test, to, um, to search weapon. They're just using drones. And this is also very important and also shows the Western countries that the Russians, are, let's say, are afraid of entering this part of the Black Sea because of high risk of being attacked by the Ukrainian state. Navy drone and so on. So the situation is very critical. We're going to see more updates of today. I believe that um, the global hawk in the Black Sea is another uh, is warnings that these days there are going to be also something happen there. Maybe the Ukrainians will attack Crimea with drones or something like this. Now we're moving to Kherson area. Today the Russians published another video of attack against the Ukrainian positions using the drones. On this video we see how the Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian positions on their bank of the Dnipro river and uh, after that they sent the drone and attacked the Ukrainian positions. So we haven't received any updates about the losses or something like this and maybe that was just a regular reconnaissance operation trying to figure out the Ukrainian positions. Everything might happen. Uh, we haven't received nothing from uh, Pitsihatkin, from, uh, from Bradley Square, Rehov Bridgehead, so we will bypass this territory and we are going to move to the Vremivka Tactical Bridgehead. And this morning we got at least two important updates from this territory. The first one is that some Ukrainian sources uh, reported about some progress, about some success in the vicinity of Urazhaina. If you remember the uh, uh, the settlement on the west of, Uraz of Urazhaina, Stara Majorska, was captured, at least the part of that settlement was captured by the Ukrainians and the only uh, thing that blocked them uh, blocked them in their further offensive operation was the situation in Urazhaina and this night the Ukrainians have attacked that settlement and as I understand probably today we are going to receive maybe even negative updates for the Russians that this settlement will be taken by the Ukrainians. At, uh, to support the Ukrainians during that operation the Ukrainian artillery squads and brigades were bombing and shelling the roads that were heading in direction of those two settlements like Staromayorsk and Urazhain in this video we see how the Ukrainians were, by, were attacking supply roads and not um, and uh, those attacks uh, pinned down the Russian forces and not allow them to send reserves to the north to penetrate the Ukrainians' offensive operations. Now we are moving further and we are going to get the Klishevka area to these uh, positions. Today the Russians published at least three, uh, have already published at least three videos from this bridgehead. The first one uh, is located in the vicinity of Andreevka. This is a very important video. We are using this video for geolocation pro purposes. In this video we see how the Russians were bombing the Ukrainian positions along this forest line. So basically that means that the Russians during the clashes of the previous days were forced to step back from these positions and currently the Russians ticked closer as close as possible or even in this in Andreevka. So basically this map will be updated before the next video and according to this piece of information we will color this territory and we will turn this territory in gray zone or if, or maybe under Ukraine control because the Russians left this territory. If you remember yesterday we discussed that the Russians as a result of fierce fighting on Daniel's front line destroyed during the previous 24 hours around 11 artillery systems and today the Russians continue publishing the videos uh, of that uh, pretty successful uh, day of artillery duels and the Russians destroyed few. On this video we see the destruction of Hobbitzer D20 as I understand or something like this, another ammo depot among the brushes and forest lines and uh, on another video we have uh, the Russians published how they dis discovered and destroyed the Ukrainian M777 Hobbitzer using the Lancet strike. So pretty successful attacks. 
And the Ukrainians haven't published uh, even a single video during the previous night. Maybe they will do this today. But for now, we see that uh, the Russians continue counter artillery duels because this is the only thing they can do, and this is the only necessary thing they need to do to slow down and to stop the Ukrainian offensive operation. Because uh, for now, uh, as we discussed, Lut Assault Brigade is the main brigade that currently storming Klishevka has almost lost its combat uh, capabilities, but yet they still have possibilities to continue offensive operation in this area. Now we're moving further and we're going to talk about Liman Frontline. We also got some updates from this area, two geolocated videos we received from during the previous night. Uh, the first one, um, both of them are showing the uh, Russian artillery strikes and toss flame tower system strikes against the Ukrainian positions in the forests, in the fields, and on Karmazinovka bridgehead. And this is all, all these videos is geolocated, and the second one uh, took place also to the south of that area. This video took place, this event took place during this night, according to the author of this video. And also the Russians were bombing the forests, uh, and also this video is geolocated, which confirms one more time, and this map is going to be updated before the next video, that at least this part between Novo Igorov, Kavalovka, Karamzinovka, at least some forest lines, some forests are under Ukraine control, and that the Russian progress is much less in comparison with the situation that we described and discussed during the previous videos. You see, this is the forest. And uh, so basically, as I understand, uh, uh, we will change the map, something like this, because this uh, area still remains, and at least this uh, part of the territory still remains under Ukraine control. So there are two bridge, basically there are two bridgeheads, one to the north of Kovalevka and the second one to the south of Karmazinovka. Because uh, we also uh, discussed updates from these two territories and they were under uh, Russian control. There were video confirmations that those places were taken by the Russians. Another video from the Kupin's front line, the Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian artillery position. And after that, as a result of artillery strike, uh, they destroyed another Ho Rush Ukrainian Hovidza. So the continue counter artillery duels. The Ukrainians were using these hovitza to supply and support the Ukrainian defense forces in the vicinity of Novoselovka, in the vicinity of Kislovka, and the vicinity of Stelmachovka, and so on. So the Russians, of course, understand if they want to continue their offensive operation in this area, first of all, they need to suppress and to destroy the Ukrainian artillery systems. Now we're moving further. We are going to discuss a little bit international updates. And the first one we are getting from Belarus, and today there was an accident. In this area, according to the uh, Polish Ministry of Defense, the Russian Belarusian helicopter crossed the NATO border, not even Polish border, but NATO border in, in two places. And uh, this is uh, like a very interesting update. The Ministry of Defense of Belarus reported that Ukraine, that Pol Poland, uh, Polish, Poland is lying and they are planning to use this case to increase the number of forces on the border between Poland and Belarus. And uh, so we'll see, we'll follow this situation. If you ask my opinion, I believe that uh, probably something like this took, um, really happened in this area. Now let's move to Africa because we got also a lot of very interesting updates from this territory. The situation is getting worse and worse every single day. Today the sources published the video and the sources are saying that uh, that's video, this video is supposedly showing a plane carrying French soldiers to vacation from Niger today. So uh, as we discussed yesterday, at least the uh, France authorities and Italy authorities announced about the evacuation of their personnel, evacuation of people, civilians from these two countries. And we remember that the last time the Western countries announced about evacuation, it, this situation, these events uh, took place in the February of 2022. A few weeks later, the we, the special military operation started, and now we see the same picture. The uh, European uh, countries announced about the evacuation, but this is not the only last and uh, only thing uh, that sh uh, tell us about possible upcoming intensifying of actions in this area. Another country in this region, Burkina Faso, also announced that uh, the flames of African protest grow ever hotter. Burkina Faso's president has banned uranium exports to France and the United States. They now join Niger and banning uranium export to France. So this is a critical situation because we know that there is an energy crisis in Europe uh, and uh, the Europe uh, took a decision to stop buying gas from Russia. Uh, they st at least France still have a lot of nuclear power plants and I, I know that France depends on the ex 
colonial um, places, ex-colonial countries in Africa, and now the France is going to have a lot of problems. Of course, the Russians anyway will the Russia Russia will anyway support these countries because now the situation plays completely in Russian favor, and uh, this may lead to more protests in France, to more problem in this country. Of course because of uh, like energy the development continuous development of energy crisis in this country we need to expect the growth of the costs and so on which will also lead to some protest in this area and that's it for this short video military summary channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon and have a good day bye bye